The first time I went off the air was, was when, when, when the series was canceled. And at that point, I was a little desperate, you know. I was making phone calls that, that I never thought I would make, and I, I, that I didn't have the, uh, the intestinal fortitude. I mean, to call up directors and say, I'm looking for work, that's, that was not my MO. And, um, and inevitably, they'd say, well, we'll, we'll get back to you. <laughs> no, no, nobody, uh, with the exception of Jody Guster, uh, would uh, you know, take those calls very seriously. So I started writing. I, in 1970, 71, I started writing. And the first thing I wrote was a, a show called Whatever Happened to the Class of 65. And um, that probably was my best experience. My experience as, as, a, as a writer, television writer, descended. It was a descending uh, uh, shape to them uh, as opposed to one where things get better and better. The, f the best one was the first one. There was no editor on the show. It was just me and the producer. Um, there was no, uh, there was a minimum of characters you had to write for that, that had rules. It was, because it, was, it was an anthology series, so you created most of the characters uh, when you wrote it. Um, so I had a good time, and I, I, again, I took this from, the, from newspapers. Uh, oh no, I took this from a book. It was a book, uh, I didn't read the book, but it was a book about a class, a graduating class in a Pacific Palisades, I think, high school. And the authors followed what happened to these students when they left school, and what happened in the next five or 10 years. So I projected on you know, a story that would uh, involve some of these students. And that's what the whole s series was about, about fictitious students who went on to do different things. And it came out pretty good. It came out to be, in a 56-page story for an, for an hour, it came out to be about 95 pages. <laughs> so I had to do a lot of editing. And it was very painful. And I know that there were some points that uh, were not totally clear by the time you, uh, was, was, cu it was cut down uh, because I had to cut so much out. But it was serviceable. It was serviceable. And, uh, and it, was, and it went, on, went on the air pretty much the, way I, pretty much the way I wrote it. So I was pleased about that. The shows that followed that, like Family, with Meredith Ethics and Bernie and um, the other folks who were on it, uh, was m much, much, uh, much uh, less like what I had written. It was, it was like they had rewritten it. And in each one, I wrote about four or five episodes of different TV shows, and each one was less and less um, what I had in mind. Um, it came to the point where I was called in to write an episode of The Incredible Hulk. And um, when you write, when you, when, when you pitch as a freelancer you know, to a television series, the first thing you do is you come in and you, and you give them a verbal outline, nothing that they commit, you know, that's committed to paper. And if they like it, then they give you a, um, they give you a, uh, a go-ahead to do, and that's a, that's a treatment, and then they give you a, a go-ahead to do the first draft, and, if they, and then they pay you for that. And if they like the first draft, then you, I think, automatically get a second draft, and then you're and then you're also expected to do a polish. At least that, those were the rules, the union rules at the time. So I came in, I came in for, this, um, for this episode of The Incredible uh, Hulk. And again, I took the idea from what I'd read in, in the newspapers. And it was about a community that had been discovered in New Jersey that was interracial African American and Native American in New Jersey, in a remote part of New Jersey, who had had very little contact uh, with the outside world after all these years. I put it in the Appalachians, which I thought it'd be even more viable in the Appalachians. And, and uh, I wrote the outline. The two women who were in charge loved it. They came to me after the outline and asked me if I'd be interested in becoming a story editor for the show, because the story editor was leaving. That scared me a little bit. I don't know if I wanted to, you know, be at, at a studio office eight hours a day, uh, or nine hours a day. So I said, let me think about it. In the meantime, I wrote the uh, the, the, uh, the outline. No, I write, wrote the first 
the first uh, draft based on the outline. There wasn't anything in the first draft that wasn't in the outline. And after several weeks, they got back to me and said, this is, this is a story worth listening to because it tells you a certain way that things work in Hollywood. Um, they came back and said, well, we're gonna, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna do your, sh your, your story, but uh, we need to talk about changes. And the executive producer is now back in town. The executive producer was, a, was an ex-Marine who had been out shooting a two-part uh, Incredible Hulk, and he'd just come back, and he'd read my first draft, and apparently he wasn't pleased. So uh, they brought me in, and the three of us were sitting there, and uh, maybe it was already the second draft. I don't know, actually. I think, I think I wrote the second draft, too. Anyway, he wasn't pleased, and he, and he says, uh, you know, it, we'll, oh, he, said, he says, we'll, we'll do this. We'll do this show, but we're going to put it in Mexico. And I said, why Mexico? He says, well, it's more believable that we have these isolated communities in Mexico where the people would think, I, this is the thing that I left out, people think that the Hulk is an incarnation of the devil, because that's what I was saying that the Appalachians were thinking. They were so isolated that and they never seen this, that when they saw the Hulk, they thought he was an incarnation of the devil. He says, that wouldn't happen in America because we have too many newspapers and too much media, but it could happen in Mexico. And I said, no, I can't do that. And that was, <laughs> and that was evidently, you know, a, a sacrilege for me to say that. And I said, to do that is to intimate the Mexican people are less bright and less aware than North Americans would be. Uh, you're saying that they're more superstitious. And because you're, you're, you're labeling them as something other than North, North Americans or Caucasians, it, it, it is implied and to be inferred that we are giving them these assignations as well. These, uh, these uh, not assignations, these uh, signatures as well, that we, we, we are saying that they are culturally uh, impoverished and are, are, are not as smart, and I can't do that. And they said, well, if you can't do it, we can't shoot the, sh the show. I said, well, so be it. Uh, I can't do it. And he then turned to the two women, young women, and said, he was frustrated, he says, who gave him the, the go-ahead to shoot this anyway? And they totally took the fifth, uh, saying, "Well, this isn't uh, this is this, this this draft is not what he had in the in, in the in the li in the uh, outline. We, we thought it was going to be a Rachel Jackson Rachel ja Shirley Jackson story uh, about stoning the villagers who uh, every year w w because, the, because it was a ritual in the in the community. The lottery it was called the lottery. It was a ritual in the community to, to stone people every year it was part of their ritual." And I said, we never did discuss that, we, and we never did decided on that. I said, if you, if you look at the, at, the, at the outline, there's nothing about that in the outline. And, and the first draft, and, and you passed, you gave me the okay on the outline. So, uh, and th so that's what this first draft is predicated on. So he listened to my argument, and they said nothing. They were also making $300,000 a year each, and they were not going to that, this is my own editorial comment, but my sense was they were not going to jeopardize that for, uh, for whatever benefit, integrity, and honesty could, could give them. So they went, they went the way they went. And um, then he says, well, we can't, we can't make the show. And I said, okay. And I walked out, and that was the end of it. I did get paid. I did get paid for it. I got paid everything. I got paid for it as if they'd gone to shoot it. But, that was the end of it. And, and there's, you can see the, how the, pol how the politics play. Uh, 